This is Twit. Uh, so first of all, you've been to a million and maybe a million and one consumer tech events at this point. Uh, so I have to imagine this was a nice change of pace. Does Tesla put on a good show in this case? Yeah, they do. Uh, so this was uh, this was interesting because it wasn't really a consumer facing event. It was actually for employees. So the majority of the people there worked for Tesla already and it was kind of Elon talking to them. But it was broadcast to the world and it was still really entertaining. Yeah, everybody got a, got a window in. And I mean, you wouldn't have known that it wasn't a, a consumer facing event because everybody online was really anticipating finding out a little bit more about the Model 3, uh, which they did, which, by the way, you got to you got the chance to actually drive one. Was it that morning? And uh, tell us a little bit about your experience. Yeah, it was. So it was like in the middle of that day, way before that nighttime event. Uh, I was in, I can't say his last name, but I'll say friends. The, the lead designer over at Tesla was my co-pilot. It was his car that we drove and did about a 15 minute loop around Fremont around the factory as we talked through the car and he explained what was different about it from the Model S, et cetera, uh, which is kind of naturally what I compare most cars to anyway. Uh, and it was great. So it was Pretty similar in responsiveness to the Model S. You, you kind of stomp on the pedal and you get an immediate response just because that's how electric cars are. Uh, but then obviously the interior of the car is super blank, super clean, super minimal. So if you're into that, that's great. But obviously it takes some getting used to because everything is on that screen uh, from the radio controls to AC to uh, to the, the mirrors and controlling where the AC goes. So hmm. it's really interesting, but it, it feels futuristic and it feels really similar to my current Tesla. So I was into it. So was this one of the base $35,000 models or did it have a lot of upgrades, the one you drove? They, I'm guessing the car I drove cost about 50,000 because it was the long range model. So it had the slightly beefier motors, 060 and 5.1. And it had the premium interior package, which meant it has the glass roof and the wood trim and the, the higher end speaker system. So that right there puts it at uh, 54,000 and it had autopilot. So it was pretty well equipped. They didn't really have any uh, any base cars to drive. Now you mentioned the interior layout and when I was looking at it and you know, kind of prepping uh, for having you on today, I thought about what I what I feel like I know about you, Marquez, is that you do like kind of minimal as it intersects with technology. I mean, when you take a look at the interior of this vehicle, like saying minimal is kind of an understatement because it's like the dash. Yeah. It's just like a, a long, slender dash. And in the center panel is a big screen. Um, That's it. I mean, is that appealing to you? And do you think people are going to get used to kind of like that center position screen as opposed to having the readouts in front of the driver's seat? Yeah, so it, obviously every every car has an instrument cluster right behind the steering wheel. So yeah. it was a little weird looking off to the side to see the blinker and the speedometer and all that. Um, the explanation I got is obviously they intend for these cars to be autonomous in the near future. So hopefully it won't be as weird to sit in the driver's seat and not really have to look down too much. Uh, so, you know, the bare interior, not a whole lot of buttons was obviously appealing to the minimalist in me. But yeah, you see the interior. It still does definitely have a little bit of a learning curve to look over there uh, for literally all the functions of the car. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel like I could see myself getting used to it. I only have two screens in my car now. If you subtract one, kind of just means you look to the same place every time. Yeah. So I, I, I know before we started the show, you hadn't put your video up uh, yet for your review. So I, I was wonder, how is it different to uh, review this Model 3 Tesla versus like an iPhone? Oh, no, what's up now? Yeah. Oh, it's up? Yeah, 14 yeah, I, minutes ago. I, I just dropped the video a couple minutes ago. That's right. Um, <laughs> it definitely is different, mostly because I guess, first of all, at this event, it was interesting because when we did those test drives, it was no photos or videos allowed during the day. So obviously all the journalists who are writing their articles had a field day and they wrote everything they needed to. I, on the other hand, uh, came back to the studio and, and was talking through my experience with the car. So that was a little different. Um, but I am doing more car stuff now, which is a lot more fun, but also a lot more work because you're shooting different angles. You need, it requires a team. Yeah. Shooting a phone doesn't require a team. It requires someone to drive a car, someone to shoot the video of the car while driving. So it's uh, it's more work, but it also is a lot of fun. Yeah, right. I can imagine that. What what about the uh, Model 3 took you by surprise, if anything? What, what's something that really stood out to you? Um. Not a lot, mostly because I've followed it a lot. I think the one weird quirk was the, the AC, the way it works. So I've talked to this, this point a little bit, but 
you know how in most cars you have the AC and you have the little vents on, you know, a vent here, a vent there, and you kind of adjust the flaps where you want the air to point? Mm -hmm. This car just has one big slot all the way across the center and no flaps to point. But if you go in the touchscreen, you can sort of adjust where the airflow goes up or at you or to the outside, uh, which was just really interesting. I get, and then there's also no glove box button. That's a button on the touchscreen also. <laughs> So little things like that. Like it's clearly super, super clean and sleek and minimal, but it still has a learning curve because of that. Yeah. You better hope nothing ever happens to that touch screen. <laughs> Otherwise yeah, you're, you're hosed. Well, and I mean, another as and along that same line, the smartphone in this case is your key. Uh, yeah. So it's your key to get in and it's your key to start the car and, and, and drive away or whatever. Uh, do you, do you feel like everybody's ready for that, that kind of a shift? I feel like, that's a big, big jump. I don't think everyone's ready right now, but this is a, a super forward face. A lot of things about this car are like ready for 2019 or 2020. So the autonomy, that's number one, uh, having a smartphone or the other option is this sort of credit card sized card, which has RFID and you walk up to the car and it unlocks. So it has the same functionality as like a, I guess a normal key fob. Yeah. But yeah, this, the whole smartphone controlling your car thing is new to most people. So you already have a Tesla and this is of course the the, the least expensive model. Is it something you would just, uh, I don't know if you would upgrade to, I don't know if you'd say upgrade, but is it something, <laughs> is the Model 3 something <laughs> that you would, uh, you would consider yourself, would consider driving? Uh, because I own a Model S, no, I'm not getting a Model 3. Uh, I do know a lot of people who were considering a Model S, never pulled the trigger because it was a little out of price range or they didn't have that option and now the model three is an option they are getting it so i'm not someone who's buying it but i, I know a couple of people who are on board yeah uh now you not only got to drive one as you have told us about you walked away from the event a winner they you didn't win a car uh but tell <laughs> us <laughs> <Bad>. <laughs> tell us how you uh came to create the winning commercial in the project love day ad contest and what did you win yeah <laughs> that was a fun one so i haven't done a whole lot of car videos but when i got my tesla it kind of acts like a piece of text, so I decided to start making videos about it. And then, of course, you know, up comes this this contest that Tesla's holding where anyone can just make a 90 second or less sort of fan made ad. I was like, okay, obviously I'm gonna just go ahead and try to make one with my car. Um, and there were a lot of really conceptual, really dreamy, really interesting videos made about the whole idea of sustainable future and electric cars in general, which are really cool. Uh, one of my favorite entries was uh, one about like spaceships for Earth. So a lot of fun stuff. Uh, I was kind of game planning mine. And then it, we ran up against the deadline and it, we ran out of time to make it. So we were going to basically cancel the whole project. And then a couple of hours after we decided to cancel it, Tesla extended the deadline by another couple of weeks. So we were like, all right, we have to make one. Uh, we went out, made this video in, took us about three days to get everything shot and edited just because a lot of what you're looking at is like on actual roads and we have to plan all this stuff. Um, but I think it turned out really well and it was kind of a thrill to see it played on the big screen in front of all those employees. And I think everyone liked it. So it was really entertaining. <laughs> I think you have to work on your mean guy look a little bit. Like when you're that, that yeah. one moment, like. <laughs> I didn't have the mean mug going. I guess I should have, but yeah, that was, that was a fun moment. <laughs> It's so great. It also could be a FedEx ad. It could yeah. be a Cheerios ad. I think you've got yep. it all there. <laughs> yep. You were an equal opportunity ad creator. <laughs>